artificial intelligence and neural network. Invenio is the world's first metal detector using artificial intelligence and artificial neural network. The artificial neural network enables the device to provide superior shape extractions, as well as depth indications, by utilizing adaptive learning algorithms. In other words, your device is a learning detector, and the more you train it, the better target shapes it will provide within time. The neural network is present in the basic and expert modes only. The main steps in training the detector with neural network are as follows. During the training process, the 3D graph, ideally, should be in the top view. Once you have detected a target and dug it out, you need to compare the target to the shape and signal process level provided by the device. Upon performing a scan over the detected target, the device automatically displays the target shape, obtained in signal process level, 4 or 5. These two levels are the trainable levels by the neural network. Compare the target to the shapes in 4th and 5th levels. Then, check the shape in the 3rd signal process level. The 3rd level is the level that utilizes artificial intelligence by factory default. If the shape in the third level resembles the actual target the most, you do not need to train the detector. On the other hand, if one of the shapes in the fourth and fifth levels resembles the target more, you need to train the detector. In order to do this, first choose level 4 or 5 from the signal process levels. Then, press the down button and select the target. The target will be marked in green. Upon target selection, select Learn, and press the OK button. A check mark will appear in the small box next to it. The training is now completed. Analyzing the result screen. Once you detected a metal or ground anomaly or cavity in the detection screen with the IPTU sensor, and scanned over them in the scan screen, you can now go to the result screen by pressing the OK button and analyze the obtained 3D graphs of these targets. In the result screen, you can view the following data. The signal strength, the length and width of the signal, the estimated target dimensions, the scanned area and its dimensions, the estimated target depth, the estimated target shape, and the target ID. When you press the OK button in the result screen, a pop-up window will appear displaying the target ID and depth. If you press the OK button again, you can see the start and finish points of the scan, as well as all the movements of the coil, drawn linearly. By using the directional buttons, you can rotate the graph 360 degrees, and analyze it. In addition, by pressing the rotate pan button, you can switch to the pan function, and by using the directional buttons again, you can slide the screen right and left, or up and down, as well as zoom in and zoom out the image. Three D graph options. It is displayed on the left side of the result screen. If you wish, you can remove it from the screen by pressing the settings button and the dashboard will appear on the left side of the screen instead. Signal Process Level For some targets, the device processes the obtained raw data, sometimes in four levels, and for some targets, sometimes in five levels, and provides the best suitable shape. The third level of the signal process always shows the data trained by artificial intelligence. Resolution it is used to increase the image quality of the 3D graph. Save. It is used to save the 3D graph to the archives. Delete. Once the result screen is saved, delete will be displayed instead of save, under 3D graph options. It is used to delete the saved data. Dashboard. This will show up when you remove the 3D graph options by pressing the settings button on the result screen. The dashboard will display the date and time, the search mode, the frequency, and the type of search coil used when the data was obtained, as well as the resolution of the graph. If you wish, 
You can remove the dashboard from the screen by pressing the info button and view the graph in a larger screen. For more details on results screen, please read the user manual. Scanning in ground anomaly and cavity mode, to be able to obtain the 3D graphs and the shapes of the detected targets in the search screen with the IP2 sensor, you must perform a scan. First, step away from the area where you get the target signal. Then, press the scan button once and release. The device will switch to the scan screen. Different than the detection screen, the scan screen is a white, checkered ground. Press and hold the clear button. When you see the coil centered on the screen, release the button. By pressing and holding the scan button, swing the coil left to right slowly, and scan over the target, starting from a bit away from where the signal is starting, and until the coil is completely off the target signal. The most important things you should pay attention to while scanning, are holding the search coil stable and parallel to the ground, and slightly overlapping each sweep with no gaps in between. When you first start scanning in the ground anomaly and cavity mode, the painting will be in red or blue for a short period of time. Then the painting will be done according to the metal type just like in the search screen. Once the scanning is completed, release the scan button. To go to the results screen, press the OK button. This is the graph of the cavity underground marked with a big square. And this is the graph of the metal underground, marked with the small square. And this is the graph of the small metal buried where we first started the scan. Searching in ground anomaly and cavity mode. Before starting to use this mode, First be sure that the IP2 sensor is properly calibrated. Retune height will be shown on the height indicator. By lifting the coil up to the retune height, pull the trigger back once and release. The sweep height will be marked on the height indicator. Lower the coil to the sweep height, and start searching. While searching, the coil must stay within the green area on the indicator. This is very important for the device to perform correct computations. In the ground anomaly and cavity mode, all signals obtained from ground with the movement of the coil, ground effect, ground anomaly, cavity or metal, are indicated by painting on the screen. When you first start searching, the 3D graph of the signal obtained from ground, appears bigger and stronger for a short period of time, then it goes back to normal. In this mode, ground effect is indicated by yellow, metals and positive hot rocks by red and ground anomaly and cavity are indicated by gray or blue color, based on the strength of the signal. In high mineralization, the device may paint in red color just like in positive hot rocks. The signals of targets painted in red are shown with a peak facing upward, and the signals of targets painted in gray and blue are shown with a pit facing downwards. In this mode, the device does not provide any audio response. All targets and signals are only shown visually on screen. Searching with IP2 sensor in motion mode. Motion modes provide you with better results for small and adjacent targets. These type of targets will give a single signal in non-motion modes but separate signals in motion modes. Let's show this with an example.
Scanning with IP2 sensor, to be able to obtain the 3D graphs and the shapes of the detected targets in the search screen with the IP2 sensor, you must perform a scan. First, step away from the area where you get the target signal. Then, press the scan button once and release. The device will switch to the scan screen. Different than the detection screen, the scan screen is a white, checkered ground. Press and hold the clear button. When you see the coil centered on the screen, release the button. By pressing and holding the scan button, swing the coil left to right slowly, and scan over the target, starting from a bit away from where the signal is starting, and until the coil is completely off the target signal. The most important things you should pay attention to while scanning, are holding the search coil stable and parallel to the ground, and slightly overlapping each sweep with no gaps in between. While scanning, the areas where target signal is obtained, will be colored in red. Once the scanning is completed, release the scan button. To go to the results screen, press the OK button. Searching with IP2 sensor in non-motion mode, the usage of the detection screen with IP2 sensor is common for all search modes, except for the ground anomaly and cavity mode. To obtain accurate data in this screen, first be sure that the IP2 sensor is properly calibrated. While searching in this screen, the height of the coil above the ground is critical for the sensor to obtain accurate data. For this reason, pay attention to the height indicator on the screen. The ideal search height is shown with green on the indicator. To obtain the best results while searching and scanning, Pay attention to keeping the search coil within the green area. While searching in this screen, you can see the movements of the coil, in real time, on the 3D detection ground. As the search coil moves forward or back, the 3D detection ground will slide. The areas scanned over by the search coil will be painted in gray. If you change your direction while searching, and you want the screen and the coil to move together, Use the trace function. When you press the trace button and activate this function, the screen will follow the coil and rotate in the same direction. When you press the trace button, the text trace will appear in the info bar. When you detect a target in the detection screen with the IP2 sensor, the target ID will be displayed on the cursor on the color ID bar at the top of the screen. At the same time, the signal obtained from the target will be displayed with a 3D graph and colored according to the type of target. Ferrous metals are indicated with red, gold non-ferrous metals with yellow, and non-ferrous metals are indicated with green. In addition, the depth of the detected target will be shown on the depth indicator instantly. While searching in this screen, drifts may happen in both directions on the drift metal bar at the bottom. When the bar fills up in the drift direction, nothing will be displayed on 3D detection ground, and the device will not produce any audio. When the drift happens in the metal direction on the other hand, a flat, continuous graph will appear on the detection ground, and the device will produce an audio response. In such a case, you can use the auto reset and stabilizer settings to eliminate the drifts. For more details, please read the user manual. Searching and scanning. Searching without IP2 sensor. While searching in the detection screen without the IP2 sensor, all target signals, including false signals, are shown on a running oscilloscope window, with 2D graphs. The ID of the target, is shown both in the target ID window at the bottom, and with a cursor, on the color target ID bar at the top. While searching in this screen, drifts may happen in both directions on the drift metal bar. When the bar fills up in the drift direction, nothing will be displayed on the oscilloscope, and the device will not produce any audio. When the drift happens in the metal direction on the other hand, a flat, continuous graph will appear on the oscilloscope, and the device will produce an audio response. In such a case, you can increase the stabilizer setting to eliminate the drifts. In detection screen without the IP2 sensor, you cannot perform a scan and obtain 3D result screens.
Search Modes Invenio has six search modes designed for different terrains and targets. Three of these modes are static, basic, expert and ground anomaly and cavity. And three are dynamic, all metal, fast and deep modes. Static modes are non-motion modes. In other words, the device will generate an audio response when you hold the coil stationary without swinging over the target. The audio response increases in volume as the coil approaches the target. These modes are recommended for larger and deeper metals. Dynamic modes, on the other hand, are motion modes. You must sweep the search coil from side to side to detect metal. If the search coil does not move, the device will not provide any audio responses even if the coil is over a metal target. These modes are used to detect smaller targets such as coins. Non-Motion Modes, Basic Mode This mode is designed for beginners. It does not require much adjustment and can be used by adjusting the sensitivity setting only. In this mode, ferrous metals with ID numbers between 0 and 40 are discriminated out by factory default. Expert Mode This mode is designed for more experienced users. Although it works the same as the basic mode in principle, its advanced settings allow for a deeper and more stable search on all kinds of terrains. Ground Anomaly and Cavity Mode This mode is designed to detect the changes and anomalies in the ground, as well as underground cavities, such as rooms, tunnels, and cellars. The device can also detect metals in this mode. However, it is recommended that this mode should not be used for general metal detection but only in places where you suspect the presence of a cavity. This mode works with a detection screen with IP2 sensor only, and it is a silent mode. In other words, the device does not generate an audio response upon detection of an anomaly or a cavity. Motion Modes All Metal Mode Different than the fast and deep modes, this mode features a threshold tone which is continuously heard in the background. In this mode, the device provides the same audio tone for all metals and positive hot rocks. We recommend that you use this mode when metal separation is not important, and that you use the discrimination modes, in heavy trash areas. Fast mode. This is the three-tone discrimination mode designed for coin hunting, especially in trashy sites such as parks. Deep mode. It is recommended especially for relic hunting. Due to its depth, this mode is a bit noisier than the other modes. For more details on search modes, please refer to the user manual. Detection screen without IP2 sensor. The functions of the target ID scale, the magnetic mineralization indicator, the ground balance window, and the drift metal bar are the same as those in the detection screen with the IP2 sensor. Target ID indicator. Upon target detection, the ID will be displayed here. It ranges from 0 to 99 and gives an idea to the user about what the target may be. Target detection screen. While searching, the signals, as well as the signal strengths of metals, positive rocks, and positive drifts, can be observed in this section. The target signals are defined by different colors just like in the color ID scale. Ferrous metals are shown in red, and non-ferrous metals are with yellow and green colors. For more details on detection screens, please read the user manual carefully. Detection screen with IP2 sensor, target ID scale, ranging from 0 to 99, this scale indicates which metal group the ID of the detected target falls in. Each metal group is indicated by a different color. For example, negative hot rocks and soil are shown by white and brown colors. Ferrous metals, such as iron, by red, and gold and non-ferrous metals are indicated by yellow and green colors. When a target is detected, the cursor will point to the target ID on the scale. Magnetic Mineralization Indicator 
Based on the level of magnetic mineralization, this chart will fill up yellow and the mineralization level will also be indicated numerically inside the chart. High magnetic mineralization leads to lower detection depths, and users should be aware of this fact. Ground balance window. Shows the instant ground balance value changes while searching, as well as the adjusted ground balance value. When you press the info button, the magnetic mineralization indicator and the ground balance window will disappear. They will come back on screen if you press the info button again. Height indicator. Shows the height of the search coil on the bar in centimeters or inches. The ideal search height for the type of search coil attached is indicated with green color. If you hold the search coil at a different height than the recommended one, this will be indicated by red color on the bar. Depth indicator shows the depth of the detected target in centimeters or inches. Upon target detection, the bar will rise, and the target depth will be indicated numerically. Drift and Metal Bar This bar is present only in the basic and expert modes. All signals obtained by the device, as well as drifts, while searching, are shown on this bar. Changes in the ground and temperature, as well as environmental noise, may lead to negative and positive drifts. During negative drifts, the bar will fill up in the drift direction, in proportion to the strength of the drift. When the device detects a metal or a positive hot rock, or if a positive drift occurs, the bar this time will fill up in the metal direction, again in proportion to the strength of the signal or the drift. Zoom. It is used to magnify or reduce target signal graphs. By using this feature, you can magnify smaller signal graphs and reduce the larger ones to better examine them. 3D Detection Ground On this screen, you can view all movements of the search coil, left, right, up and down, as well as the total scanned area. At the same time, you can see the length and width of the scanned area by zooming in and out on ground image, and the 3D graphs of all target signals, with target separation according to metal groups. While searching in the detection screen with it to sensor, press and hold the clear button to clean the screen and to center the search coil. Detection Screens Invenio has two detection screens, one with, and one without the IP2 sensor. The screen with the sensor, will only function fully, when the IP2 sensor is attached to the device, and it is turned on. The detection screen without the IP2 sensor on the other hand, can always be used, regardless of whether the sensor is attached or not. All modes, except for the ground anomaly and cavity, will work in both screens. The ground anomaly and cavity mode will work in the detection screen with the sensor only. Ground balance. In order to perform a more stable and deeper search, you must ground balance the Invenio. First, Find a spot of ground where there is no metal present. Push the ground balance trigger forward and hold it. The ground balance window will be displayed automatically, and the word automatic will appear bigger on screen. Hold the search coil parallel to the ground. Continue to push and hold the trigger forward and start pumping the search coil up and down, from about 20 centimeters above the ground down to 5 centimeters off the ground with smooth movements and keeping it parallel to the ground. This is also shown by animation on the screen. Continue until a beep, indicating the completion of ground balance is heard. Once the automatic ground balance is completed, the ground balance value will be displayed under adjusted in the ground balance window. When the ground balance trigger is released, the device continues to operate in the all-metal mode. 
for a short period of time, and the ground balance value stays on display. For more details on ground balancing, please read the user manual. IP2 Sensor Calibration Correct usage of the IP2 sensor is critical in terms of the device's performance. The sensor must be used correctly in order for the device to accurately process the shapes, depth and dimensions of targets and display them on screen. The sensor must calculate its height and angle to be able to provide accurate data. For this reason, you must calibrate the IPTU sensor upon startup. To calibrate the sensor, place the search coil on a flat surface, adjust the search coil angle so that it is parallel with the ground and lean it against a fixed object such as a tree, rock or a wall. If there is no place to lean it against, Hold it stable as shown in the video. Press the settings button and select calibrate the sensor. The message please place the coil on a flat surface as shown in the figure and press OK will be displayed on screen. Press the OK button. You will see the message calibrating the sensor. Please wait. Once the progress bar is full. The calibration will be completed and the device will automatically revert to the selected modes detection screen.